Hi, it's Mr. Clegg. How you guys doing? Today we're going to do an activity about estimation. Well, the first thing I want to do is talk to you about what an estimate is and what it's not. An estimate is not a guess. An estimate involves a rough measurement usually and usually or sometimes involves a rough calculation. So we'll get to some examples of that in just a moment. A guess might be like that looks like about 10 meters. So if I was going to estimate something, I would probably pace off the distance and take a rough measurement. The distinction between estimate and guess isn't always super clear, but it's basically like a, a rough imprecise measurement, sometimes involving some kind of calculation. So why do we estimate? Well, we estimate when we, for one thing, don't have the right equipment, such as, let's say you saw a car go by and you didn't happen to have a radar gun with you. I don't know about you, but I don't usually carry one around. Uh, you might have to estimate the speed of that car based on some measurements that you take. Um, you might want to figure out whether your furniture will fit in a room or some other reason like that. Um, sometimes we estimate when we don't have very much time. For example, when we see some lightning flash, we might start to count seconds to see how far away the lightning storm is. I don't know if you know this, but the speed of sound is about um, five seconds per mile. So sound can go about one mile in five seconds or one kilometer in about three seconds. So if you're, if you see the lightning flash and then you start to count seconds, 1001, 1002, 1003, then you know that the lightning storm, and then you hear the thunder, you know that the lightning storm is about a kilometer away in that case. Sometimes we estimate because we only need a rough number. We might want to know if we need to buy one or two gallons of paint. So we need to kind of estimate how much area of, of walls we need to paint and ceilings. And then we need to figure out how many gallons we need to get. We don't need to get the exact square inches of the wall or the exact square feet. We just need to figure out if we have enough paint or not. And however much we have left doesn't really matter if it's exact. All right. So now we're going to talk about how we estimate distance. Well, one way of estimating distance. And you can do that by pacing. So for an adult, a large step is usually a little less than a meter. So that's close enough for an estimate. And for estimating time, I already mentioned this, we can count 1001, 1002, and so on. So we're going to actually practice that right now. I'm going to start the timer, and we're just going to go for about 10 seconds, and I'd like you to count 1001, 1002, and just watch the timer and make sure that you're right on uh, your timing. So you're calibrating your inner timer. Here we go. And go. 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, 1006, 1007, 8, 1009, 1010. Okay, I'm going to say go, and then I'm going to say stop. But during that time, I don't want you to watch the timer. I want you to look away and see how close you are to the actual amount of time uh, that I do. Okay, here we go. And go. Stop. 7.3 seconds. Okay, let's try it again. And go. Stop. 7.7 .7 seconds. All right, guys. Here's how you can estimate speed. So speed is distance divided by time. So you can pace off a distance and then you can count seconds as something like a car passes through that distance. All right, so here's the example that we're going to do. We're going to actually pace off a distance, uh, like the distance between this uh, tree and that telephone pole. It looks like the tree is acting like a telephone pole here. That's funny. Uh, so we're going to pace off the distance here between the tree and the telephone pole. And then you can go watch as a car passes between 
this tree and this telephone pole, and you can count the seconds how long it takes the car to go by. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Okay, if it takes three seconds, and this is 24 meters, then you have to divide 24 meters by three seconds, and you get eight meters per second. We'll do a little bit more of the calculations after our experiment. Okay, so I've found a suitable spot here. I'm gonna go from that telephone pole right there, all the way down to that first tree there. So right now I'm gonna go pace off the distance. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. Okay, so now we're ready to start timing some cars as they come by. Thousand one went th wow, about one and a quarter seconds. Here we go. 1,001, 1,000, it's about one and a half maybe. This one doesn't look like it's going very fast. 1,001, 1,002, oops, <laughs> it was about two. Okay, here comes a white truck, I'm gonna time it. 1,001, 1,002, about two seconds. Let's time this person. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005, 1,006, 1,007, 1,008, 1,009, 1,010, 11, 1,012, 1,013, 1,014, 15, 1,016, 1,017. Looks like 17 seconds for the human. Uh, we got some results here. The distance that I paced off was 24 meters, roughly 24 meters. Let's do some calculations to find out how fast these things were going. In order to figure out the speed, we need to take V as the speed, V for velocity or speed, V equals D over T, right? So let's take D over T for the gray coupe. And so what that is, the distance is 24 meters. Okay, 24 meters, and the Grey Coupe did it in 1.25 seconds. 24 meters divided by 1.25 seconds, and we get 19.2 meters per second. So 19.2 meters per second. Similarly, we can divide 24 meters by all these other times. 24 meters divided by 1.5 seconds, divided by 2 seconds, and divided by 17 seconds. So let's actually put in the speeds here. So this will be the time. And then seconds. Actually, I should have put the time in seconds up here and not put the seconds down here. And um, so this will be my table data table. So let's actually take the speed here in meters per second. Okay. There we go. So this is the uh, vehicle. Nineteen point two. Now we're gonna calculate these other ones in the same exact way. I'm just gonna divide uh, 24 divided by 1.5 instead of 1.25. Get 16, 16 meters per second. Maybe we're gonna get rid of these seconds down here so that it looks a little nicer. It's enough just to put the units up in the header there. Okay, so now we're gonna take 24 divided by two, actually I can do that one in my head, that's, um, uh, that's 12, 12 meters per second. If you need a calculator, that's fine. No, no judgment here. And then let's see how fast the human walking was taking. So that would be 24 meters divided by 17 seconds. So that would be 1.4 meters. 
per second. So a bit slower. All right, now we're going to convert these meters per second numbers into, we're going to convert it into miles per hour. Because here, we're in the United States here, so we're going to use miles per hour. You could just as easily do kilo, kilometers per hour. Um, actually, it would be even easier. <laughs> it would be, be easier. Uh, so we're going to, we're going to do this in miles per hour. And the way we're going to do that is we'll use the handy old factor label method. So let's just take the first uh, vehicle's speed here and we'll go ahead and convert that. So we have 19.2 and you have meters per second. So I'm going to put one second down here. So 19.2 meters per one second. And then I'm going to put a few of these things. Maybe I'll just start with one. So I'm going to change meters into kilometers. And that's going to be one kilometer per thousand meters. Okay, cancel that out. Now we have kilometers per second. I'm going to convert kilometers to miles. And I happen to know that there are 1.609 kilometers in a mile. So now I'm going to cancel that out. Now we have miles per second. We need to put the seconds up top so they cancel out with the one down there. And let's go to minutes. Okay, so there are 60 seconds in one minute. And I have to cancel out this guy with two slashes there. Now we have miles per minute, so we're almost done. We need to get miles per hour. So let's put minutes up top so they cancel out with the one down below. Let's put hours down there, 60 minutes in one hour. Cancel out those minutes with those minutes. And now the only thing that we have left uncanceled is miles per hour. So that's going to be our answer, miles per hour. I'm going to start with 19.2. We're going to um, divide by a thousand because that's in the denominator. Thousand. We're going to divide by 1.609 because that's in the denominator. Then we're going to multiply by 60. Multiply by 60 again. Hit equals and we have 42.958. So we're going to round that. We're going to round it to 43. So we have 43 miles per hour. When we're doing rough estimates, we um, we round, we don't keep a lot of those decimal places. All right, so we have 43. I thought that gray coupe was going pretty fast. I estimate that it was going 43 miles per hour. So now, for I the other ones, instead of 19.2, we'll just, we can use the same exact factor label method here. All we have to do is We'll just start with a different number here. So we'll start with 16, okay? And we can do the we can do the second one. I'm going to type in um, instead of 19.2, I'll just start with 16, and I'll do the same exact thing. Divide by 1,000. Uh, divide by 1.609, and then I'm going to multiply by 60, and multiply by 60, and I'm going to get. So now we got that car going. Uh, 35, we'll call it 36, just round those. Now the black sedan, did it in. And then the human walking, let's see how fast the human walking was. Let's go 1.4 meters per second, we'll divide by 1,000, divide by 1.609, times 60, times 60 again, and it equals three miles per hour. That's about right for a human walking. I think uh, I think my calculations are are pretty good. And that's it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of Mr. Clegg's Physics Class. See you guys later. I totally messed that up. <laughs> I forgot to say stop. Let's try that again. <laughs>